Hello everybody and welcome back to the continuation of our coverage of K-League 2023 in February 20th. This is part two, round two of our cast here. The only English cast of this incredible week or this incredible day, excuse me, of K-League. Uh, with action free barracks game over versus mind effort sharp and motive if you guys haven't seen part number one i'll encourage you with a link in the top right hand corner to go check that out before i spoil the results for you here we're coming hot off of a win for gamo's team gamo who managed to clutch out with the very sneaky five hatchery or was it yeah five hatchery hydra bust against motive and motive and gamo were actually considered a little bit lower down on the totem pole of pro gamers they weren't quite at the level that they're at now that motive is at now it was not asl material in 2023 has come a long way and so him and gamo were were permanently matched up against each other and then all the other matches are random so welcome to this best of seven we've got free spawning down here in the bottom left and mind over in the top right and this is a pretty standard build on both sides with a zealot being sent out on the map for a little bit of early pressure he's not building a second zealot though as he comes in here with his probe and finally sees that it is indeed cross map pretty tough to get your zealot especially your second zealot all the way across before that vulture comes out so free blazing away at 400 apm is he going to be able to take down mind here and put some points on the board in this round two it's a best of seven i think i already said that but there's plenty of games to watch here some very good high quality starcraft game play tournament play a lot of money on the line here. I'm not sure exactly how much was on the line for this uh, specific day of K-League, but K-League and Pro League have grown so much just over the past couple of years. You know, 2023 was really when things started to become big, but now in 2024, it's actually larger. The prize pools are larger on the daily than they are in a lot of... Um, premier tournaments like you can make more money off of uh just winning a day of pro league than you know playing kcm finals or uh, in some cases even you know asl runner-up or sometimes semi-finalists um like um, the um the main prize of the asl or ssl is sometimes smaller than just winning a single day of pro league so it's pretty crazy it's gotten kind of insane. Um, and that's all crowdfunded. Completely crowdfunded. And you're, you're, you know, you're seeing these just massive prize pools of thousands and thousands of dollars uh, each day of Pro League. And it's a daily Pro League. So you can see it. Uh, these games played all the time. And I've got a lot of comments previously. People talking about, oh, I'd love to see the more recent ones. Uh, the problem with those is that uh, they are expensive very very expensive like there's always been this culture of uh you know people who donate to the streams are the ones who get to see the replays are the ones that have the privilege of of keeping the replays um but you know that was pretty cheap a while back like 20 in 2023 and 2022 uh those those were quite cheap you don't just put in a few bucks and donate to the the days pro league or the days k league and you can make you can you can go ahead and get those replays but nowadays you know with thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars being uh donated to these streams it's a little bit more it's, it's a little bit harder people are not as willing to they're not as willing to give over those replays unfortunately and what are we having here for mind one factory 
one factory here. He's opened up the eggs. I th was expecting like a, a double factory or maybe a starport somewhere. Where's this? Where, where's all this gas going? He's got a very fast upgrade and a very fast siege deck. I'm not sure what this is going to go into, but I was really trying to explain something here is that they're not giving away the replays to just anyone who donates anymore. They're really savor saving those replays only for people who are donating the highest amounts. And yeah, it's it's not really possible for me to to donate a huge amount of money to get one pro league and then, you know, just get a few hundred views on it. It's not going to it's not going to pay for itself is what I'm saying. And um the guy that I got these replays from, Dude Nerd, I don't think that he can make it worthwhile either. He's not a r super rich guy or anything. We almost need like a Korean person who's been donating for years and, you know, who has an in with the Pro League and, and has those replays to take pity on us and <laughs> allow the English community to actually get a hold of some of these replays because there are so many great games. Uh, it's almost impossible to cover, but we'd love to see like the, the best of the best weeks of Pro League, the really hype ones, if somebody has those replays and can reach out, that would be that would be the best possible situation. Now, we're going to kill one of these geysers. I think we just kill one. It's not like we're going to get attacked by Marines here, but okay, he's going to kill the second one. I just find it nicer. You can just send Zealots through here um, if you only kill one. And yeah, we're not going to get attacked by Marines, I don't think. Vultures can't slip through between, you know, just between one of these. A little bit funny that Free's going to go ahead and kill that. Back at home, we add on more factories. Science facility very quick. This is just a straight up two base, really fast, plus two. He's just going to get into the craziest, fastest plus two that you can do. And this is not really the normal style anymore. Players don't play like this very often anymore. You can't really put on any pressure to the Protoss. And what Protosses have realized, maybe in just the, the last year or so, is that they can do whatever they want. They can get a ton of expansions up. They can go four base and have a huge gateway count and then just kind of roll you with just way more units. What players in the modern age now in 2024 are doing is mostly staying on low upgrades, like one attack and one armor, and then you know, putting on pressure, getting out on the map, taking a third base, maybe uh, six facting or five facting and trying to deal some damage to the Protoss player if they're being too greedy. Uh, and then getting the plus two after plus one armor is done. So they have a lot more time and with more units and their plus two comes online a lot later, but they have more opportunities to do stuff because you can see mine's just not really doing anything. He's just kind of running around with four vultures. He's got a drop on the map. He's going to try to do something with that. Let's see if he can actually get in here and, and actually deal some damage. But it seems like free is everywhere. He's got dragoons over here that he's ready to utilize to just block this. A couple probes are going to go down. Eh, more than a couple, three, four, five probes maybe can go down here. But everything will get cleaned up pretty fast if freed is not expanding as quickly as maybe he could could definitely take another base right now it's just kind of focusing on unit production getting a lot of gateways out templar archives on the way no second robo here just yet but he's got a few shuttles out already he's got plenty of observers spotting everything he sees the factory count he's seen that it's gone up to six factory no second add-on as well so this is going to be really heavy vulture play We'll see where it goes from there. Okay, trying to take a base in the top left, but it looks like this probe is going to get killed. That's a little bit unfortunate. We're at 10 minutes now. It's around the time when you'd love to take that third, uh, fourth base, excuse me. Dropship down here might just land on this high ground. He can put some mines here and siege the tank. If free is quick enough, he'll just pull the probes away and not take any damage from the siege tank. But he might be able to kill the cannon. Maybe he can deal damage to the uh, dragoons as they try to clear this. I'm free going to come back up here, try to get the probe into the top left. Looks like he will do so successfully. Vulture over here after clearing out the, 
the eggs just in case a probe was sent this direction. I like it. That's a very good move there from mind. We've still got these shuttles roaming around, but it doesn't look like they've done anything yet. Not diving in or, you know, getting too frisky here. Going to try to push over towards this third base as the command center comes up on high ground. Be taking that shortly after 11 minutes, maybe 12 minutes is when that's going to land and get saturated. And so mine just slightly behind the curve here, but his upgrades are really on time. Like he's hitting 11 minute plus two plus one. Very, very good timing there uh, in that regard. Manages to pick off a an observer. And I don't think there's that many observers around anymore. A lot of them have been killed. There's one over here. Oh, and he's going to fly into the main. I wasn't expecting this, but I guess as soon as the Terran player moves out, it's a good time to go in. Oh boy, there's a lot of turrets in here. He doesn't even drop the Reaver. Oh, dude. Nothing came out of the shuttle that died right here. And this one dropped like two Zealots and no Reaver came out. So that is about the worst case scenario here for free. Mind maybe just going to roll this. I don't know. His army is looking strong. Hasn't been able to clear out these assimilators. If Free goes over here and just kills these eggs, he may be able to just run in there. We have some storms. It's going to be hard to push out here as mine. Um, with no, with uh, the storms available and the tanks this clumped up, you can absolutely dive on that. More vultures coming out here on the side. There's the tank getting in. He's got three kills already. Finally pulling the trigger on this drop is actually going to cause quite a problem for free right now. As the army's moving out, it's a great move by Mai. Is going to force the uh, Templar and Zealots over here in the dropship. And now there's actually no splash damage at all to deal with these tanks. They are super clumped up. I'm really worried for mine if he keeps his tanks that clumped up and get stormed, but he's looking good so far. None of that's happened yet. It's up to free to get over here and, and you know, make that happen. This clump of tanks right there is so scary. If you actually just fly the shuttle over here and land on that, just kill all those tanks, you might just win this fight. That's not a lot of tanks on the left-hand side. That's what, five tanks, six tanks total? If you just kill these six, crazy, crazy good damage. Drag in some mines here. Maybe go for a little bit of a storm drop. Let's see if he can get it off. Yeah, just easy dodges there. Just move the uh, SCVs out of the way. No big deal. And it looks like this is actually going to die. Wow, Free really getting outplayed here. Seems like he's just not quite on the level right now. Mind able to deflect everything. And there are definitely opportunities that Free has. Like, it's not like he's being completely shut out this game there's definitely things like this that mind is giving as opportunities for free now let's see what free wants to do he's got four templar in this shuttle this is a really great setup though we've got a bunch of mines in front of everything big chunks of tanks i'd love to see these more spread out i feel like that's one of mine's biggest weaknesses in this matchup is not spreading his uh tanks enough but Let's see how this engagement goes. Again, it's up to free to make it happen. He drops one zealot, two zealots on top of these tanks. You can see he's identified that that's a really great spot to drop. But the anti-air there's a little too strong. And he's not going to be able to actually kill any of those tanks, unfortunately. Coming down here, probably going to kill the eggs and try to get into that base. Tank over on this side. That is going to be dealt with by a single zealot. Trying to kill these assimilators here to cut off circulation into that base. Mine's slowly pushing out here into the middle of the map. Can he snipe the shuttle? That would be a big snipe. Does a lot of damage to that shuttle there. Nope. Almost no HP left on that. Can he actually get some more shots on it? No. A lot of zealots going down to his own uh, storms and mines. Vulture's doing a good job of cleaning that up as well. Are we going to get a storm? Doesn't have the energy for it on this Templar. And maybe some Templar are going to go down on the back side of this. The storms have been really lackluster this game. Storming for one SCV. You know, storming on some vultures that just run away. Throwing down storms on things that 
don't really require storms. He's going to pick up these Templar once again. And start to back away, just begging for mine to come out and overextend a little bit so that he can actually take a good fight. But, but I mean, mine is ahead in supply now. This is a pretty straightforward win, I think, if mine closes it out properly. But things can get crazy if storms start to land on big chunks of units. Let's see what happens. Doesn't have any uh, observer here. He does have it coming up now with the speed on that observer. He can get it into position pretty quickly. These dragoons are getting chunked out. That's a lot. Dude, this is so many tanks, but they're so clumped up. If Free would just take this engagement properly, he spreads everything out and just goes in on this. That's not a lot of mines. There's not a lot of vultures in front of that. He drops some Templar on this. Oh my god, can you ever take a great trade? Again, mine clumping up so much with this army. Are we going to see the big storms here? Storm, 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 storm. Can he get one? No, no storm there. Okay, finally he gets one storm. He dropped four Templar and he got one storm. Okay, second storm going to clear out about four or five tanks. But you can see his supply plummeting. Three. Finally taking an engagement, but it wasn't the one he was looking for. Mind baiting him into that fight and takes a really, really nice uh, one indeed. This plus three being done and plus two. It's exactly the timing that mine was looking for. He's going to send five tanks to the top left, mine up this area and set up some tanks to uh, deflect any reinforcements coming up towards top left. Free has failed to clear out these eggs to make a pathway through his main base over to this position. So he has to get out on the map somehow in order to save this. He has to send up a shuttle or something. Oh my God, he's baiting in dragoons right now. What was that? Six dragoons that just went down for free. Oh gosh. Free is looking super free right now. Like just ladder point. Free ladder points, Mudiol. He's just super, super free here. There you go. Tanks with the D-Matrix to help out against that storm defense. He's cleared out the probes. This is all going down really nice and easy. Mine looking great here. He set up some turrets over here as well. Um... I don't know what that turret is for. Maybe just some extra scouting. He's got mines, which are going to eventually get cleaned up here. But it's just delaying free. Just slowing him down a little bit. Oh, he started to mine over here on the center right. Did free see that? No, he didn't even see that base. Well, that is a shame. Um, seeing that, he could have definitely dropped on it and maybe killed all the SCVs. But he's going to head over here into the natural. Sack the shuttle to get a few kills over in this natural but not even all the scvs went down so this is just going so well for mind here nemesis is a heck of a map it's a crazy map um it took a long time for pro players to really figure out this map but it feels like mine has pretty much got a handle on how to beat free in this map on this map he's just not having any trouble here closing this one out no minerals here at the six o'clock natural is basically gone it's all up to this base to carry free uh to give him a chance in this game oh boy templar templar oh that's a great storm but i just don't think it's going to be enough dragons coming from behind here but they don't have the muscle to break through and stop this push and free is going to be out of this game guys we're going to have a point on the board for team mind Team effort, I guess you could call it. Effort, probably the the ringer here for his squad. But uh, mine putting in the work as well. And free will end up going down. No two ways about it. Like, I don't know what this army is doing right now. Running into mines. He's not even pulling the observer up with this army uh, to actually clear those. So there's really no way for him to get through that unscathed. And... The Dragoons are going to come down here. Some storms get thrown out. It's pretty reasonable, but he needed this. He needed he needed these trades, you know, minutes ago. Uh, like almost 10 minutes ago now. 
and getting them at this point is just not going to make the difference 160 supply now to 94 free should have tapped out of this game a long time ago but he's still hanging out uh in here for whatever reason some more good trades with the storms but again this is just uh way 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 too late we're mining on more bases right now as mine than as free and as the final unit goes down are we really not gonna tap out free are you serious i'm gonna speed up the game there we go gg is finally called and free taps out we're gonna jump into game number two kind of a disappointing result there from free but more great games coming up here don't go anywhere game number two coming right up oh wow we're gonna do a tvt now don't get a lot of chances to cast these we've got sharp over here in the top right hand corner this versus barracks down in the bottom right just gonna remove their vision so if i want to we can hide the vision of either player vision plays a pretty critical role in this matchup more so i think than any other um the control of vision and the ability to gain vision of enemy tanks and tank lines is very important because tanks can fire farther than they can see there they could shoot further than they see oh, okay barracks out in the front no it's actually after supply depot same thing here with uh barracks placing his barracks in the middle of the map this is just for scouting purposes i was uh, getting a little excited there but as you can see both players on the same curve building out their refineries and getting themselves into that factory tech pretty much the only thing that's useful in this matchup factories and starports are what are going to be used unless we go super super late game and then maybe we might see ghosts but it's a pretty big maybe it's um much more likely that we'll see uh, things end with vultures or potentially with just uh, tanks and if it goes beyond that we'll get to drop ships and if it goes beyond that we might get to like mass wraith um and then if it goes beyond that we might get to uh br battle cruisers and split map situation and if it goes past that we might get to ghosts uh emps and possibly even medics that's right we might even get to medics crazy crazy is that because restore will actually get rid of lockdown which is pretty key when it comes to playing against ghosts but um that is always as usual a pretty big if uh, most games will end long 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 before a position like that ever occurs the marines of sharp go ahead and push back the marines of barracks barracks is gonna go ahead and float his uh, barracks over towards sharp's base looks like sharp has kind of figured out where barracks is based on the, the way that his marines were moving oh he actually got the scv and never mind he saw everything with the scv and we're gonna go ahead and get a vulture on the field a little bit of kind of a wasted mining time here for both players seems like barracks has kind of forgotten about his scv over here at the factory still so little things like this is actually what makes the difference between the top top level pros and um someone like barracks in 2023 barracks in 2024 is crazy crazy good he's actually really scary right now but in 2023 he was kind of like um he was more of a as or africa challenger series type player acs type player rather than asl type player and you know he was moving that direction but making little mistakes like that they can hurt you they, they can definitely slow you down um more important in tvt than any sort of like macro oriented stuff is actual positioning though positioning is very very important and actually the decision making uh, aspect is really really impactful in this matchup so just simply being very good at macro is not going to win you many games now if you're going vulture versus vulture macro will actually win you a lot of games and that's kind of what we're seeing here another factory gets thrown down he's just making a 
ton of vultures. He does make a machine shop. Uh, whereas, okay, Sharp makes his machine shop. He starts his third factory. We're just going to have Vulture Wars here for now. Vulture Wars, the name of the game, especially 2023. Uh, about a year ago, it was so popular. And nearly every TVT was ending with just pure Vulture Wars. But uh, players have kind of figured out how to transition out of those uh, more recently by just adding on... Uh, slowly adding on like a tank or two and then eventually switching fully into other tech but for a long time it was just both players building more and more factories you can see sharp adding on a fourth factory now and one player just trying to get the edge over the other uh, with just a few more vultures than their opponent and whoever has more vultures will end up being the victor um there's a little bit of positioning and you know the connections on the during the actual fight like who's got the better arc um how many of your vultures are firing compared to how many vultures of theirs are firing how's the targeting sometimes that's a little bit of a factor uh, especially as the numbers get a bit lower uh, at the outset of the fight it's more about just getting everything shooting um and not having any vultures kind of running around in the back of the fight but then it becomes uh, as the numbers get lower about targeting down the vultures as quickly as possible to lower the dps of your opponent you just want to kill as many as you can to try and start to get that edge because even if you have one more vulture than your opponent uh, it could you know start to snowball very quickly now barracks is out on the map with his vultures but he's actually got one less factory which is a little bit scary a tank gets added on for sharp which is interesting are we going to go into an armory here? Yeah, armory on the way. An academy coming up as well. We don't have any armory or academy here for Sharp. He is just focusing on units. And Barracks has the high ground. But with the addition of the tank and more vultures coming out of Sharp than his opponent. Well, he's actually only making three. Okay, there's four now in production in the queue. Um, he starts mines as well. I think we could see Sharp just barrel him over. He could just walk over uh, Barracks' army. So he's going to go around it for now. He's leaving a pretty big opening up towards this natural. If Barracks was just to break off a few vultures and go up there, he could deal a lot of damage. But at the same time, he might not have enough to actually fight. Okay. Um, we're going to take this fight now. A lot of Sharp's units not firing, and Barracks getting quite a few free hits there. This actually went pretty bad for Sharp so far. Sh Barracks actually had a supply lead and a SCV lead as well. And he started um, tank siege. This has gone pretty poorly. And I'm a bit worried for Sharp at this point. We've got a tank out on his side. We haven't had any run bys or anything. He's in kind of a good position here out in the front, but he doesn't have siege mode. And Siege Mode's about to finish for Barracks. So I think Barracks going to hold on just fine here. Sharp now ahead in supply. A little bit. But I don't think he can bring that to bear just yet. Okay, he's going to come in with the Vultures from the side. As well as from the front. And some of them are firing. Uh, a lot of them are firing. It looks like Barracks is winning this though. And with the tank in Siege Mode, he's just going to target down the tank of sharp sharp is gonna lose that tank pretty quickly oh he gets the one hit with that mine and actually barracks loses this fight crazy can't believe sharp managed to take that maybe with just the wraparound of the the extra vultures coming in clutch there actually managing to to win this one a lot of vultures out here in the front it's still three factories of four factories which i think is the biggest factor right now that sharp is just producing more but barracks is kind of locked into his natural now he can't really leave he's lost one tank he's got a second one out now i think that the tank was lost no it's actually alive on eight hp oh my goodness sharp send that back home oh he sent an scv out to repair that that's a good move as well just go ahead and repair that tank then he's gonna have a tank advantage and the tank advantage can take you in a a very good direction here he's gonna move out uh Barracks is to take this base while Sharp takes the base up in the top center. But Barracks firmly stuck at home in this base. And Sharp with full map control right now. He can kind of go wherever he wants. A lot of these mines are for Sharp. 
Only a few mines over here are actually for barracks. A few more are getting sent out on the map. He's moving out with a few vultures, but this is really scary. Once you lose vulture, like map control with the vultures, it's really, really wild because similar to mutas, you can just chase down the opponent's units if you have more. If, if more vultures from Sharp find these vultures from barracks, he can just run them down and you cannot like you kind of have to stand and fight you'll lose everything but if you try to run you'll just lose everything and not trade anything out at all you'll trade very little if you have less vultures you only get a few vultures of your opponent and the lead will grow but running away means that you'll lose everything and you won't get anything back from it at all one wraith out on the map actually has two kills already must have been killing an scv over here uh, at the third base, maybe killed this uh, one building the command center. Bit annoying for Sharp. And actually, Barracks' third base is going to finish first. Barracks has taken a little bit of a position on the map now. And has a drop ship coming uh, over towards the main base of Sharp. As Sharp tries to take another base? No, he's actually moving over here. Oh, this is a pretty big move. Can he actually get the Goliaths into position in time? No, he does not. This starport is going to be denied. That sucks for sharp and he may end up losing a lot of SUVs here in the main he's only at 47 right now to the 65 of barracks oh boy a lot of SUVs end up going down there really painful for barracks and that dropship went home or really painful for sharp excuse me and that dropship gets home these tanks are in a bit of a, a strange position here I don't know if we're gonna be able to get out of this spot He's actually going to run forward. Try to kill this tank. Not actually going to be able to do it. Loses a tank of his own. Barracks having a little bit of a struggle here. I thought that we might see... Oh! Big mine connection there. Another big mine connection. Two tanks go down. Most of these were freeze mines, but there were a few mixed in. Um, mines for Sharp. So he gets some good value out of that. Two drops coming in now. Two tanks, four vultures, heading into the main. There's nothing at all here for Sharp. He's going to lose the star, or the, the SUV building the starport again. Okay, no. That finishes just in time as the drops come in. More SUVs are going to go down. This is a huge problem for Sharp right now. And at 48 SCVs, I don't know if he's going to be able to take fights in this game or if he's going to be able to maintain army supply against barracks at this point barracks has done a fantastic job playing kind of from behind you know he lost the early map control but he's gained so many kills on these uh poor scvs we're at 50 now and really barracks is done he's done making scvs he doesn't have to make scvs anymore he can just purely produce units Whereas we're dumping a ton of money into reproducing these SCVs and we don't really have anything to show for it. Command center, fourth base, going to be done for barracks here in a moment. Over in the center right. Rebuilding an engineering bay or building it for the first time, I'm not sure. This Wraith going to come in, just deal a little damage. Looks like it will be picked off. Though so not a big win there for barracks but he's already he's had enough wins at this point that i really feel like he's gonna end up taking this uh unless sharp can pull out something really special here a drop coming in once again hitting this base over here can he target some uh scvs one nope just one scv that's that's a little bit unfortunate those two drops finally uh, met their end definitely this wraith should be able to track that down it's a little bit faster and with the moving shot here, Sharp going to finish that off. Sending out army on the map. Will he get uh, hit by these mines? It's a little bit dangerous pushing out with just pure tank. Oh my god, I can't believe that didn't hit. Oh, there we go. Triple kill. Those tanks getting wiped out. Sharp giving, uh, being given some gifts here in this game some opportunity opportunities to actually maybe bring this one to a close to bring it to a win he's got 60 workers now he is 20 supply behind but his position is pretty good he's actually moving in here to act to deal some economic damage finally to 
Barracks is actually way overproduced SCVs. So this is actually helping Barracks right now, honestly. 80 SCVs is just far too much. Your, your army is going to be too small. Like, you need to... You actually need that in, in army supply, that extra, like, 10... 10 army supply. Uh, that's actually necessary, so... Oh, over 80. He's still making SCVs. What is happening? I feel like this is a... Maybe a nerves issue or something. Whenever I overmake workers this much... Um... Going back in the in the replay is really painful. It's really infuriate, infuriating, actually. Let's take a look at the upgrades as we're going into this fight. Plus two is done for Barracks, and no plus two for Sharp just yet. So this is a big advantage for Barracks. As he pushes forward, he's going to clear a lot of these tanks and get himself into the position to deny the fourth base. This actually could be the killing blow. This could be the killing blow. Sharp is going to have to move into position to try and stop this he brings a bunch of scvs out here but he's eating mines as he tries to run forward he's taking a lot of damage from those he's gonna bring the tanks up but they're just getting eaten alive by these plus two siege tanks having a really hard time breaking this position he will eventually get through here but he had to give up a lot and look at that 30 worker advantage for sharp or for for barracks right now i want to say sharp because i I feel like Sharp is so much stronger in 2024 than Barracks, but Barracks is putting up an amazing fight, and Sharp is just not... He just, he just wasn't quite at that level yet, right? He was so much weaker in 2023. He's grown so much from that time till now. Or from this time until now. Um, okay, Sharp going to try and snipe a uh, dropship. Looks like it's one. Not bad. There was a Goliath in one of those, so manages to save the the other. But now, if we zoom out, you can see that Barracks is truly surrounding Sharp now. He's got this side covered. He can cover the middle here with these this uh, few tanks down here. He's got the right side covered. I think Sharp is going to have to make one gambit, one big gambit play where he pulls everything together and either breaks this side or breaks this side. If he breaks this side, it's to kill this base. If he breaks this side, it's to delay the game and you know, uh, try to spread out into the top left. He's actually pulling up towards the middle here, and Barracks is totally ready for this. He's got plenty of tanks here. He's hitting the long or the, the, the small end of the rectangle, right? You want, basically, you want, if, if you're looking at two tanks, uh, two tank lines, if one tank line is this way, and one tank line is this way, you want to be this tank line. You want to be the horizontal to the vertical, or uh, if the tank line is this way, you want to be the, the vertical to the horizontal, right? You want to be the, the top part of the T, and not the center part, the, uh, the, the long end of the T. Well, they're both long, but... You get what I'm saying. We have another base going down here, but Sharp is actually on top of that. He's going to get down here. Help out Barracks again with his over SCV count. There's too many SCVs here. Just going to give him a little helping hand there. Kill off a few of... You know, if free, free up a little supply for him to make a few more units. You know what I'm saying? Drop ships coming into the main base now. I'm gonna go ahead and drop some tanks behind this mineral line or some vultures i guess no tanks just yet there must be some in here right no not at all he's gonna sack all of his dropships it looks like pretty much every dropship's gonna end up going down um yeah all the turrets are just gonna hit this on the way out and he might save one no not even one drop so that's a big advantage for sharp having drops and your opponent doesn't that can really swing things in your favor. If he goes around the map, if he takes like four or five dropships, goes all the way around the map and brings them down to here, he could land on top of this high ground and make it near impossible for uh, Barracks to clear. Like Barracks will have to do a lot of things to actually get rid of that army. So let's see where he goes with it. Hopefully he will head in that direction. He's actually going to try and break a siege line with this. And I don't know if this is the right call. You need to get more efficient, I think, as Sharp right now, because you are so far behind. And this is just not the efficient trade that we were looking for. Plus two is done now for Sharp, so 
a big important upgrade there for him and he actually has plus three almost done whereas barracks just started plus three attack for himself so he will fall behind in that but it's not really the breaking it's not a, a, a break point a upgrade break point it's um, more important to get that plus two for sure than it is to get the plus three. And so, Bar Barrick's gonna try and do another little break over here. He's gonna try and get into uh, this fourth base once again, but this is just a lot of pressure for Sharp to deal with while, uh, you know, Barracks is continuing to expand outward all over the map. A drop did make its way down here, but it's not the biggest drop in the world. Just two Goliaths. Uh, won't even be able to kill that many SCVs, unfortunately. Vultures would have actually been a better choice, but he brings these down here. He's going to go ahead and maybe kill that um, Comsat. Oh my gosh, so many. So many factories. I don't know how he fit all of those into the base with uh, good unit flow, but I guess he's managed to do that. Trying to clear this army out. Trying to push back barracks right now sharp having a really hard time he's got hardly anything on the map he's got a pretty big gap in his line here in the middle he is mining here and here but we're one base ahead right now as barracks and this base down here represents a second base more than his opponent so having a really tough time sharp has an okay SEV count but he needs another base bases are less important in TVT than I think any other matchup. Being one base behind is not that bad, but you can't get too far behind. You can't get like two, three bases behind and hope to win the game. You really do have to have some level of parity in that regard. And looks like this is not gonna go well for Sharp. He tried to drop SCVs for a desperate counter attack, but this is way too much stuff. It overwhelms Sharp and GG is called Barracks gonna take this game away and he is on the action side of things so we're all tied up here going into game number three that was uh that was the tvt and it did end up ending before we went to battle cruiser so i guess that i can be happy with i was talking about ghosts and medics and all that earlier but my god are those matches hard to cast in the very late stages of the game? Things slow down so, so much. I was going to have to come up with some other topics to start talking about, but luckily, luckily we don't go there. It ends in the dropship phase. Uh, pretty well played by Barracks. Felt like he was ahead um, as soon as he took the middle of the map. Like As soon as he pushed out with his tanks and started to get position, there were some little mistakes like with mines connecting and stuff, but Sharp once the drop came in as well and started to kill a bunch of his scvs it felt like he just wasn't able to recover and that's funny because it's usually sharp the one who's dealing all of the economic damage with vultures and i really didn't see much except for at six o'clock of sharp actually getting kills on scvs so good on him uh barracks actually taking this one away off of a very accomplished terran player uh, such as sharp you can see how far the both of them have come now in 2024 both of them in SSL so impressed with uh, You know the the overall Improvement of both these players, but we're gonna jump into game number three everything's tied up It's all up in the air best of seven now kind of a best of five here Let's jump into that next game all right, so we're jumping out of a TVT directly into a ZVZ. Effort versus action. A matchup that I know much, much better than TVT. Starting this replay a little bit earlier because you never know what can happen. And every little action in ZVZ is so important. Every little move every decision the number of drones you put on your gas the number you put on your minerals you know building one extra drone could mean the difference between victory and defeat in a lot of different situations it's such a finicky matchup it's so close and 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 really like a knife's edge matchup you have to be incredibly sharp to find ways to get anything 
higher than a 50% win rate in this matchup. It's crazy how close everybody's uh, win rates are when it comes to Zergs and ZVZ uh, in ASL and SSL. Everybody's got like pretty close to a 50% win rate. And the only real exception was Jadon in uh, Kespa era who was able to get, you know, a pretty damn high win rate. And I think that's why he was one of the best Zergs in the, in the world at the time. Both players going for an incredibly fast hatchery. That is interesting. Effort going to uh, hedge his bets a little bit more, as you can see. Effort going for less drones. He went for like a 11 hatchery into a 10 pool, nine gas, and then started building drones. Whereas as you can see, action, he built the dr drones a little bit quicker and put down the hatchery at 12 and then like 11, 10. So he is in a better overall e economic position with uh, one drone more than his opponent. That's actually going to make quite a significant difference to his money as time goes on. He's got basically exactly what you want. And effort has what you want minus one drone. <laughs> he's just, he's got one drone. So it's going to be one drone less. So he's going to have two on gas, whereas effort or sorry, action has three on gas. He's going to have more gas. He's going to have a faster uh, timing. Oh, layer here from action. F uh, speed first from effort. And you can see how nicely his money lines up here. He's got uh, enough minerals to keep producing. He gets the overlord and he gets the layer at the same time. So exactly the right number uh, amount of gas here. Everything lining up nicely for effort. Action just chilling, man. He is in a very good spot right now. As long as he doesn't take any serious damage from this earlier metabolic boost, we're going to have Ling speed just slightly faster from effort. Action is going to continue to steamroll ahead. Two drones on the way. I don't know if he can afford to make these drones right now. This seems a little bit scary. Action getting too greedy. And a, a lot of cases, just a little bit of greed can really hurt you here. Um, no drones were lost there. Everything okay. Oh, did he actually lose a drone? I don't think so. Maybe Effort slipped out a drone or two um, during that engagement. He's up to 13 to just 12 now of action. So was I looking at that wrong? Was it actually two drones in production for... Um, effort and then action was just producing only links i might have messed that up sorry about that guys we've got the spire on the way it's over halfway done and the spire just started for effort so this could actually end really really quick effort is going to get in here though and seize the spire and he should know now okay i actually need to make spores i'm not gonna live um, if I don't make spores, or maybe I just have to only build lings and try to win with lings now. Um, and at least like force the, uh, force the mutus to stay home until I can get a scourge. I need scourge. Two mutas on the way. Very nice setup here from action before the fight even starts. You can see he is completely ready for lings to come in and, and try to make something happen here. Second evolution chamber on the way. Two more drones coming up. Yeah, it looks he, he looks at it. He's like, no, I don't think that's going to work. I don't think we're going to be able to get in there. Um, effort. Going to start to take some damage from these mutas. Loses a couple of links there for free. That's never a good feeling. The links of effort will have to retreat here for a moment. But he's got his uh, scourge on the way. So... He's managed to make this work, even though his spire was a little bit late. Oh, a run by getting into the natural of effort. And actually, this is going to deal so much damage. 
Oh, this is brutal. He's stopping the mining time for quite a long time. He gets another drone and another drone. Dude, this is so bad. He might be able to get to the bottom of the ramp here as well. If he can get to the bottom of the ramp and just, uh, you know, have a good surface area, I think that actually could have done that a little bit better. But this is a pretty fantastic trade. Yeah, all the lings were coming down the ramp. And if you just spread your lings here, if Action was able to just spread his links like this and get a full surround on all the links coming down the ramp, he could have taken an immaculate trade, but he's already done well enough with that little run by to where he is almost unbeatable at this point. There's almost no way to lose this. It's so good right now for uh, Action. He does take one hit from a scourge and that's one way that you can come back into a game as a zerg player in his bad zvz is you can just hope that your opponent is not paying attention <laughs> you can just send scourge around the map do stuff like this where you see that the mutas are moving and then boom there you go you gotta you gotta kill um, just like that um thankful to uh, effort for showing me exactly what I was trying to explain there. But it's still bad. It's still very, very rough. How many mutas do we have? We've got two. Two mutas. That is incredibly bad right now. As soon as the mutas are being microed, it's not really worth it to throw the Scourge in anymore. Um, and right now is probably going to be the point where uh, Effort's forced out of this game. Yeah, action just getting way too far ahead now. And he's going to have to tap out. GG. Yeah, you really want to catch the mutas as they're flying across the map because it's really hard to pay attention to them constantly. Uh, and what you do is you kind of... You you run ahead of the mutas so that you can see uh, them trailing behind you. And then just at a random point in time, you right-click a muta. Um, or even better, you split the two Scourge and uh, try to make them both connect. And if you do it correctly the muta player who's flying this direction the the scourge come in and they have less than a second of uh, you know vision on the map where they suddenly see like a little tiny uh you know yellow dot there and then boom they just get instantly connected <clears throat> so it's very very hard to avoid a uh, place like that but it wasn't enough here for a for for effort the run by with the two links too strong here for action the positioning in front of the natural way too good uh, effort kind of hedged his bets in this game he tried to play a little bit more safe uh, with the way that he opened hatch first uh, but action just he just went for it he f went full send uh, he did the 12 hatch and it paid off big time for him nice little zvz here nothing out of the ordinary though pretty straightforward gameplay and Action Squad gonna take a little bit of a lead in this series. All right, once again, Gamo versus Motive here this time on Dark Origin. I'm kind of excited for this one because I really liked how Gamo played in part one. That final game was really impressive from him. And I wanna see more interesting ideas from this man in the top left. Motive going to start with a gateway first. This is not my favorite map, guys. I am not a fan of Dark Origin. I think in this matchup, it plays basically one way. And that is, they put a pile on here. And then sometimes they'll put a pile on here too. And there's just nowhere to expand. That's my problem with this map, really. Fundamentally, I feel like it's just a bad map. Um... In this matchup, also versus Terran, it's just such a pain in the ass. There's really no great places to expand, and then once you get out on the expansions and the the sides, storms over the over onto the high ground onto your drones. I mean, it's just nightmare fuel. It's so bad. Um, there's like a couple of things that you can do, and there's just so many ways to punish a Zerg uh, on this map. I I'm not a fan of it. Um, we'll see how Gamo decides to play this out. Because it's always nice to see it. it. It's nice to watch good Zergs, really strong Zergs, play uh, on these maps that I hate. 
so that I can see that yeah, no, it is possible. Like, yeah, they can, you can absolutely win games on these maps. It's just about how you alter your normal strategies to accommodate for those kind of map features. Now, what I'm going to get in here just as the lings are about to pop. And he might actually get surrounded here. This is really close. They're going to pop like right as he arrives. Uh, drone's going to take some damage. Oh, he loses one drone. That's big. One more. He's going to lose it. He's going to lose that one drone. Yeah, two drones go down. That is brutal. Gamo in a terrible position now. He's actually going to build three more sets of lings. And he is just going to go for it, man. He doesn't even have a gas on the way. It's past the three minute mark. Usually want to start that around 245, 250. And he hasn't even killed the probe either. Oh my goodness, this is so bad. He's going to see the links popping. Motive has all the information that he needs, could possibly want. And he's got a wall back at home with a shield battery coming up because he doesn't have the forge yet. Forge is going to finish. He'll make that cannon in just a little moment here. And. He's going to have four zealots uh, out on the map or four zealots here in the uh, expansion. That should be enough to be able to, to stop this. He's going to bring out the probe as well. He just needs to buy a tiny bit more time. I don't even think there's enough time to kill this gateway anymore. I don't I really don't think you can do it um, using that shield battery. Only about three, four lings hitting this. And the cannon is basically done. The gateway still has enough health. I think Motive just pulls back now. He's going to be absolutely fine. Dude, Gamo is in such bad shape right now. It is brutal, this position. And he's even got the pro back inside the main. He sees the timing on the lair. This is really rough. At least he forced, you know, uh, quite a commitment to the defense here. He forced a cannon out before the cyber nine score. He forced a shield battery out. He forced constant zealot production. And a little bit of panic out of motive. So the cybernetic score is not quite done yet. But I think this still represents a pretty serious problem for Gamo. He just hasn't really built that many drones. He's so low on drone number. He's got a bunch of links that he can't really use right now. At least he didn't throw those away. But they're not very useful. And the zealots are going to come out and pressure them. Links are going to have to back up here. You could try to slip a zealot out now go around the map and try to hit when they're not expecting it. That's a move that I've absolutely lost to before. You push the zealots push out a little bit, force the links back slightly, and you're like doing a lot of things at home, trying to get everything uh, rolling, uh, you know, getting drones on the right patches and everything. And one zealot just goes whoop, out onto the map. He shows up in your natural when you've got no links back at home and things get really out of control at that point. Yeah, he's got these on hold position. He's gonna back up here. He sees how many links this is. All right, he sees how many zealots this is, excuse me, and he should be able to produce the correct number of links to deal with this. Um, but will Motive actually go back home? Will he just turn around after going across the map? We've only got one pair and he's supply blocked. Oh my goodness, this is bad. Oh man, and he loses a ling. Um, okay, Motive turns around. Thank God. You can make six drones. Oh, that was scary, man. That that was like almost game ending. That could have been the end of the game right there. Um, but the supply block actually helping him. He probably would have made lings if he wasn't supply blocked at that moment. But since he was supply blocked, he ends up just making um, all drones and a couple of overlords as well. Zero kills in this course there so far. It's going to go across the map. How close are we to the Spire? The Spire is actually almost done. That's pretty decent. As long as he hit the Overlords pretty well. Um, he probably saves all of them. Yeah, I think he's going to save all the Overlords. Wow. Gamo made such a late gas, but I guess he just barely put on enough pressure with the Lings to keep... Um, to, to slow things down for motive. Okay, he gets this one Overlord. That's it. I mean, you're to that's totally acceptable here as Gamo. And Gamo finding ways to get back in this game. I'm pretty impressed. Pretty impressed. The early micro with the, the drones was not the greatest. And, you know, losing those two early drones, pretty rough. Um, getting supply blocked right as the Zealots move out. It's like me playing this game or something. But 
seriously, I that happens to me literally all the time. It's it's a constant problem if you come watch my stream. Um, it, it's happening to me almost every game. And I know it's pretty pathetic, but we're slowly getting better, slowly increasing our skill. Um, and hopefully that type of stuff will be a thing of the past here soon. Plus one is just about to finish. Leg speed is on the way. Or leg speed is done. Plus one is just about done. We've got five mutas. I think this should be a pretty easy hold for Gamo. He's got a second sunken colony on the way. Um, second sunken colony over here at the third as well. That's that's pretty much what you want uh, against the zealot timing. To just have... Oh gosh. He wasn't actually targeting the... Or he, he had the move command on a zealot. So those first two scores did nothing. The scourge did nothing. And now everything will be shoved back. Need to get these drones to mining. 40 drones, holy cow, on three base. That's quite a good amount. Yeah, 45 is like the kind of cutoff on three bases. That's basically all you want if you're going to go six hatch Hydra. So he does need to... Oh, he's making another creep colony here. That's interesting. He's making all mutas. And he's got Flyer Carapace on the way. We're going to see a dive in the main. No more cannons here. Um, we got DTs being made to go out on the map. We don't have Overlord speed, but I think Game was just going to go for one big gambit here. Oh my god, he's building six more drones. Wait a minute. What are we doing? We're building... We just now start muscular arguments. He's got missile attacks on the way. Um, the other upgrades, they don't take as long, so it's it's not the biggest deal getting that that plus one going is is the most important thing so i like that they started that first and he's just gonna go for it guys he is going to try and break this main base and if he catches all of the corsairs uh, as he's coming in he's definitely gonna do that he's jumping in here gonna start to hit this cannon we should see an archon made immediately that archon really that needs to be made yesterday it needs to be made over here okay it actually was made yesterday it's over there in the natural already a scourge come in they get some connections um but not the greatest i mean he hits a lot of these forces a lot of them are low you can see one two three four five of them got hit by one scourge and not a second so the follow-up not the greatest the zealots went across the map they really couldn't do anything obviously with three sunken colonies it's kind of a foregone conclusion they will be pushed back but um the mutas are still out on the map. They just didn't get the damage they were hoping for, though. He was hoping to actually force the probes out of the main base, but there was too many Corsairs, plus the Archon coming in. He just wasn't able to do what he was meaning to do, and a third base is already on the way for Motive. Game was going to try and take this as his fourth, and he's got the uh, drone count to do this, but he's going to make a big switch into Hydra's. And see what else he can do with these mutas that he's made. He's made a lot of mutas. And he's got that plus one armor. So he spent a lot of money into this play. He can't just let this, uh, you know, do nothing. He's got to try and get in somewhere. Maybe snipe Templar. You know, maybe go for the main base once again. Zealots are going across the map with an Archon. Again, there's three Sunkins here. Three Sunkins and a bunch of Hydras. It's just not doable. You can't get in here with this few units. Oh, Scourge are going to look for connections once again. Here we go. Get some hits. But not, again, as many as he would have liked. Coming back in with the Mutas. Trying to take a fight. But again, Corsairs with plus one. Eight of them. Managing to gun down a lot of these Scourge before they can even connect. And the fourth base looks like it's just going to be a sack. Not really much he can do about that. He's going to go around, it seems. We head around uh, the map this direction. See if he can't get over here and, and do some sort of counter attack at the same time though what if making his way over towards this base all right can we simultaneously attack here and defend here at the same time i don't think so what i'm gonna come in and kill a ton of overlords at the third base so many overlords going down right now and the game was just gonna push in towards the natural oh boy this is gonna get pretty crazy we should see a storm on all these drones but we're not seeing it right now the Drones are actually doing a good job of keeping the surface area on the sunken colony very low. We're going to sack, it looks like, the third base and maybe go for the natural. He's killed the 
uh, the third of motive, but he's got to send these in. One DT could actually deal so much damage to this entire army. He's got to be really careful with that. The mutas go in and just die. There's the DT. Two DTs actually pop out. We've got no overlord speed. And the hatcheries are going down over here. Hydras are going to come out to deal with that. And he actually might save that base. Meanwhile, the natural of motive goes down. What a crazy base trade situation we've got going on right now. DTs have free reign. They're going to rack up so many kills. But at the same time, I mean, the natural is dead. And the, the third is still alive. We've got 32 drones, 50 probes, but only one base mining. Those probes are going to mine out those minerals so incredibly fast. It's crazy. Shuttle going out on the map right now. We've got Corsairs moving as well. I think that Gamo needs to cut his, uh, you know, take what he can get, cut his losses and just go home. Go home and prepare for whatever drop is going to be sent in. A drop into the main base right now where there's no overlords and no overlord speed could be insanely damaging. Uh, he's going to go ahead and try to pick up that DT, I think, over here at the top right and send it into the main. Let's see how much damage he can do. If he can actually get in there, he's going to fly in, I think. Start to kill overlords everywhere. If all the overlords go down and then the DTs get dropped in, it's going to get weird. We've got... Mutas and Scourge popping out right now. Do we need to bring forward these uh, Hydras? The Overlords do not... I still ha do not have speed. It's crazy to me that they don't have speed right now. Um, he's going to block... Oh my god, the block here is sick. Oh, ho, ho, game -o. That was so good. And Motive just didn't pick up on it in time. And of course, they're going to go to work on some Overlords here. But look at how... Uh, far ahead we are. Oh no, that gets dropped into the natural here. How many kills are going to go down? 18 health. Dark Templar is going to get an insane amount of damage. Picking off even more overlords on the backside. Finally does get that DT. Can send these back to work. I think Gamo has just barely done it. I think he's managed to hold on. And with his third base coming back online and pumping out more Hydras, as long as he just keeps producing Hydras. Well, he can't right now. He's overload supply block, but as long as he keeps producing Hydras and he defends his third, he should be okay. We're barely mining at all. Long distance mining going on for Motive right now. Game mode cannot overextend. If he goes across the map and tries to end the game and the Zealots actually win the day, Zealot Corsair wins the day, then he's going to be in a really big, uh, he's going to be in really big trouble. He's got to stay home, um, defend against these these dts everywhere he's finally got overload speed that's actually big overload speed right now is so important another dt gonna slip in here actually can't get by that evolution chamber nicely placed evolution chamber there and the overlords are spreading so game out i mean he should win this game he should a hundred percent be able to win this but of course it all comes down to that execution what are we gonna see here Oh, this is smart. The Lurker. Lurker upgrade on the way. He's been showing just pure Mutalisk and Hydralisk the entire game. And he killed the Robo in the natural. You know that Motive can't really afford anything right now. Like, okay, he does start the Robo, but he hasn't even built the Nexus at the third yet. He's on one base mining. He is in such a rough position. He would love to get this third base online, but he knows. He knows how dangerous Lurker can be in situations like this after the Robo's gone down. Oh, great storm there. Excellent work with these Corsairs as well. He's just pushing everything back. He's going to come up here and kill the fourth. Oh, man. Motive is playing this really nicely right now. I mean... A lot has gone wrong. That counterattack was beautiful from Gamo. Oh, it's gonna go after the Templar. Can he actually get the Templar? One Templar. He got one Templar for all of his mutas. That is crazy. Okay, Motive could actually win this right here, right now. Lurkers are gonna pop up though. I guess with the Lurkers finishing, he actually won't be able to take this game. Like he, he can't push in there um, with uh, seven Lurkers on the defense. It's just not gonna happen. Still sees no Nexus here for Motive, so he knows that he's not um, expanding and, and growing right now. And that means that Gamo, as long as he stays back and just gets the Lurkers in the position that he needs, uh, he won't be broken. Eventually, he'll be able to move over here and take this fourth base. 
eventually he'll be able to um, move out with this kind of tech advantage here. We're just now getting sing Singularity Charge. Dragoons are going to start to increment out here. The Nexus still hasn't started. Oh my goodness. We need to grow. Motive, we're going to run out of minerals at the natural. We're like a minute away from these minerals running out. We haven't started the Nexus yet. Some lurkers are going to come down into this position. Prevent this Nexus from going down indefinitely here. At least until the Observer makes its way to the front, which it finally will do. These Corsair killers going to head around the map and... They actually need to fly in and do some damage because it's like now or never, man. You got to get in there and utilize those units. I know that it's better in a lot of cases to save your Corsairs and keep them alive. But there's a point in the game where it's like I need to do damage so that I can get this next base out. I have to slow down the Zerg and prevent him from just macroing out like like crazy. Seven overlords in production right now, actually. Um, you might be able to get in on top of some of these hatches and kill a bunch of overlords as they pop. He's just gonna go for the ones in the third base, but actually all the Corsairs are gonna fall now and like none of the overlords are gonna die. Wow, that was not what I was, uh, what I was talking about when I said you need to get damage. <laughs> just goes in and kills every, loses everything. It would have been way better if you went after this group of overlords. Way less Hydras under that one. Um, oh my gosh. I think this might be the end here for Motive. Yeah, after all the, the Corsairs go down, now he can bring everything to the front, right? Nice storms there. Still no Nexus. What am I looking at? Motive. Get your priorities straight, my dude. What is going on right now? Game going to come in from every angle? He's dead. Uh, he can't do anything. Like, he can't hardly even produce. Can't hardly produce at all. Kill this Templar right there. That one goes down. Another Templar is available. One more storm. That's a great storm on the ramp. But even with that, I mean, all we have to do is deny the third. That's it. That is it. The third base is denied. And it, the minerals are gone. There's four minerals there and 20 minerals there. Who do you think is going to win this game, guys? Motive taps out. GG is called Gamo. Takes another game off of this Protoss player. Well done. I don't think the game mode could take games off of motive anymore. I'm not sure about that, but it feels like a game mode has fallen quite far behind in 2024, but it's it's just cool to see how far motive has come. He was really struggling against game mode back in the day. Back in 2023. I'm talking about it like it was a million years ago, but this is pretty darn recent, and he's made massive strides in his uh ability to play this matchup well done game though for taking that game away let's jump into the next one well the tables have really turned in this series now actions team just one game away from victory here in round number two gotta get it straight who who won round number one it was actions team so all they need to do is get one more win here. Action needs to take this one home, and they will win this season or this uh, this day of Kaylee. They'll take home that prize. So it's um it's all on the line here for Mind. Mind has to pull this one out, and then they have to go on a massive winning streak if they want to have a chance to bring it back in the ace match. Um. Let's see what mine goes for here, man. This pressure is on. And Action's opened up with a regular 12 hatch. He's got his spawning pool. He's not under, under any pressure. Just a one racks fast expand here for mine. Who's gone for the Mickey Mouse wall in. The head and the two ears here. Perfectly tight against the Zergling. So it's a good position here for, for mine to do something like this. Oh, he accidentally moved the Marine onto the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and you wouldn't want to lose the game because of that. That certainly would suck. But he's actually going to move it over. Leave himself just a small gap here to, to be able to cycle Marines in and out of. You can block that with just one SCV. And if it's really serious, you could block with one SCV and two SCVs behind to repair that. And you'll just never get through um, 
that's the Zerg player. Even if you're targeting with, you know, a couple of lings, you'll only be able to get surface area for like one to two lings on it. And the one to two, or the two uh, SCVs repairing it from behind will uh, keep it alive for just a silly amount of time. And then they can, they can repair each other after that if you manage to get past that line. And the Marines will just gun everything down. We have a second barracks on the way. It's going to be for that Academy rush. And so mine's going to come out and put on some pressure to action. I doubt that action will crumble off of a play like this. You should just know exactly kind of what's coming here. Um, he's spreading out his lings everywhere. He's trying to find this SCV that's sent out on the map. And he will spot that. Put a little damage on it. That's some good damage there from uh, just spotting that with the first ling. And the Marines are going to try to move out. Maybe snipe this one ling. Prevent it from dealing any more damage or getting any more scouting information. He's going to come up here. He's not actually at the high ground, so that's a little bit unfortunate. But this is four lings. That's only four Marines. And the lings have speed, so it's a little bit scary. I actually want to send these back home. Make sure they don't lose any Marines before the push out at five minutes. We're just about at that time now with the uh, Stimpak upgrades coming. And the first two medics out on the field. It's time to go across the map. He's going to go ahead and close the door. As more Marines on the way. He doesn't even have to produce fire bats here, which is very nice for mind. Um, it's always scary to get run by uh, if the Lings want to try and, and just go past you. Uh, you might be in trouble. Oh, oh, action. Getting some damage. That's good damage there. Slowing this down a little bit. And yeah, you just got the wall in. You can just produce Marines. So you don't need to... To hedge your bets by making fire bats here. Uh, which are not going to be useful at all against the mutilus timing that's coming. One sunken colony. Just barely going to be enough here to force mine back. He scanned the natural. He saw what was there. And he knows it's just probably not going to work out for me. I'll just go ahead and back off. Evolution chamber was thrown down just as a safety precaution for action. Kind of make it a little more difficult for the marines to get good surface area. But he knows his mutilus will be out in good time here before the sunken colony could go down. And uh, Lynx just did a great job in this, uh, in these movements here from action. He's just been spreading them, checking everywhere, getting the scouting information, trying to snipe Marines on the backside, like trying to, to tickle them a little bit, uh, you know, pick off a medic or anything that he could and slow down mind enough. And it is cross map, so it's pretty hard on polypoid to actually do anything with the two racks anyway um but actually did a great job of just holding that back and now he's here in the natural just kind of poking around don't want to take too much damage on these mutas because once you get seven you might be inclined to dive you might be inclined to like fly through and get a few kills fly into the main try to do some damage over there but if you don't have or if you wait you deal if you take some damage on these mutas before you hit that seven count then it's it's a lot harder to make that happen right he's gonna come in here try to pick off a missile turret you actually cannot repair that um so that will burn down a little bit unfortunate there but mine's gonna start to move out on the map he wants to create a threat he wants to create a threat out on the map so that these mutas have to respect it but action is just not respecting it right now he took the base in the 12 o'clock so it's much easier to get reinforcements to that area, but it will be harder to hold later on. We just are going back across the map now. One overlord here at the rally point is probably going to get picked off. It's a little bit unfortunate for action, but it seems like he just wants to build mutas and lings and just clear this uh, sulky style. It feels like that's what we're going for here. Does he have enough lings though? He's got quite a few mutas. Got a good stack of mutas there. A lot of these are damaged, though, from fighting the turrets earlier and trying to break into the natural. So I don't know if you actually want to go for it when so many of the mutas are damaged like this. Because diving on top of these marines is probably going to cost you an insane amount um, of mutas and hit points on those mutas. Coming up from behind, he's going to try and squish this now. Links are going to add a fair amount of DPS. 
but you can see he lost quite a few mitas. Okay, still has 10 left over at the end of that, so that was pretty worthwhile. Yeah, I'll give it to him there. That was a pretty decent trade there. He's gone back up to the 11 meter count. And will he throw down a quick transition? Yeah, immediate transition here. Hygela stand, Queen's Nest, as that fight was occurring. He throws down both those two buildings and he will have his hive on the way. Great, great play from Action. Just really solid standard stuff from him. Clearing out the Medic Marine that's threatening his natural. Not before he needs to, but exactly when he needs to. He's going to come in now and start to threaten this natural. It's looking tough for Mind right now, I'll be honest. Mind is having a hard time. He's hardly done any damage. He's moving out across the map again. Um, the fact that we have the, the top center as Action's third is a little bit worrisome for Action. Oh, gets a couple of kills on some Mutas there. Those were still at about half HP, so nice that he was able to pick those off. Coming back in. Just sniping off a few Marines. Hive is on the way. And let's see if uh, Mine can get around with some of these Marines. Okay, that was a pretty good Overlord. It does end up losing its life. But the fact that that spotted those four Marines is big. If he would just been able to stim over here into this base, Action would have lost a lot. But since that Overlord was there, scouting, uh, it gives its life for the swarm. And Action is going to continue to produce here. Continue to be in a pretty decent spot with 31 drones and nearly one drone per patch at each base. He's got a pretty reasonable economy going right now. Yeah, this is not quite one patch at each at each uh, mineral patch. Or w not quite w one drone per patch at each base. But he's pretty well there. He's like a couple of drones away from making that happen. And that's like the prime economy that you want for uh, just a very aggressive style that Action is so good at. He's flying back into the main base. Picking off some turrets, getting some marines, getting a few SCVs here and there. That's a great fight behind the mineral patches. Um, oh, awesome, awesome irradiate. Oh my god. Oh man, so much damage from that irradiate. And these mutas are going to get forced out in a serious way. All the mutas just about going down. Four remain with almost no HP. These lurkers here get scanned. Oh, great scan there from mind. If these were on hold position and he hadn't scanned there, he would have been in so much trouble because he sent the uh, the vessels home to actually help out with the mutas and walked across the map without vessel support. That is such a dangerous move from mind. That actually could have been the end of the game right there um, and probably should have been. If Action had put his lurkers out like here and hold position them, everything would have died and we would already be done with this this uh, week of K-League, or this day of K-League. I keep saying week because I always do KCM, but this daily Pro League or daily K-League uh, would have been over. Now it's going to continue on, and Action's going to have to find some way to get a fourth base out here. Um, he's getting into his Carapace upgrades. We've got plus one on the way now. Oh, that's actually plus two. So plus two from Mind is on the way. He's already got one one which is really strong against the, the Lurkers, right? They, it takes three shots from the Subterranean Spines to actually kill. Um, <clears throat> because of that plus one armor, you can see they've got 40 health and these do 20 apiece. So without any armor, they will just die in two shots. But with that one armor, as long as they have full health at the beginning of the fight, if they stim and then get healed up first, Oh, a uh, vessel just went down. I think I might have heard another vessel go down earlier, too. Um, so picking off some vessels here is actually insane value. Uh, it's not just the fact that he has to reproduce the vessel and that he doesn't get one irradiate down, but you could get multiple, multiple irradiates down uh, as mined throughout the course of the game. You know, might get six, seven, eight irradiates down and... Oh, crap. Somebody's at the door. You got it? Okay. All right, had a bit of a delivery going on there, but we're back. My wife got the door, so we're all good. We're just going to continue along here. 
Uh, hopefully I'll remember to edit that out later. But regardless, action in a great spot. He's going to take this as his fourth base. That is crazy, but you know what? It's actually not bad. Oh, okay. Almost managed to run by here. Mind making a bit of a gamble play. Just trying to run past these lurkers, but it's actually not too bad if you uh, are just going to go Hydralis Defiler. And I think that's what we're going to see. Yeah, look at those upgrades coming now. You should be getting a uh, range here in a moment as well. And a lot of uh, hatcheries are out. Third base on the way. And Mind is irradiating here, but he's lost so many uh, vessels that he's having a tough time breaking through anywhere action is getting up to a kind of a crazy number of drones oh get one oh another nice kill there dude mine is having a really hard time he is struggling right now and this zerg player is about to explode he's finished all of his drone like he's produced all his drones that he needs right now and he's got a whole bunch of extra hatcheries ready um uh, his production is going to go through the roof in a second. And it's kind of crazy how many hydras you can produce on four bases. Think about like a, a ZVP and how overwhelming the numbers are in terms of how, how many hydras you can produce. And then add Defiler to that and a few Lurkers mixed in. It's just, it's crazy. We're at one, one, two, three. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight hatch Hydra production. That is a lot of Hydras to work with. And as long as he keeps on making Defilers and casting Plagues and Dark Swarms, he should be able to take any sort of fight with the Bio Forces out on the map. We're moving into tanks though. Tank production has started. This is the right choice for Mind, who's going to throw down a fourth base and start a second uh, factory here. He really does need an armory though to start plus one attack. You really want to get those upgrades for the uh, tanks started as soon as possible because those upgrades are what's going to carry you late game. They're going to help you to just make it incredibly difficult for the Zerg player to take any fights with you. If you end up with, you know, plus three armor on the uh, hydras and no plus one attack on your uh, tanks, it's it's tough. It is rough. You're really going to have a hard time actually uh, taking those fights. So lurkers go down over here, but a defiler is making its way forward. He might be able to get a plague on this. Uh, mine's army is pretty small right now. He's backing away with what remains of that fight over here. All of those forces getting crushed. He's got quite a bit of fire bats. He's got uh, a lot of tanks too, but they're not actually on high ground all sieged up just yet. Uh, he should have some tanks up here. The The best position for tanks on this map is to place a bunch of tanks here and put a whole bunch of tanks here. And just have like a big clump of tanks there and a big clump of tanks there. This one covers this side and over here. And then this one covers this side and over here. And it's really tough to break into either of those positions with Hydra. Hydras are going to get minced, at least until you have a big upgrade advantage. Only two factors. What I've seen lately is players actually go to three so that they can spend all their gas. Ooh, losing quite a few Marines coming up this corridor here. Nine kill Lurker. Good God. That's a lot of kills for one Lurker. Ling's making their way over to the top right. He wants to take more bases. He's going to get a base over here. Finally, fourth gas. Going to get established for action. It's a really big moment for him. And look, they're going to go down. But that's fine. Vessel count is pretty high. Tank count is growing. Still no armory, though. This is a problem. Mind. The armory is worth, man. It's seriously worth. If you're going to make this many tanks, you might as well get one arm one pack. Even two attack is still very, very worthwhile. Ling's gonna go ahead and fight straight up against a bunch of Marines here. They're actually holding their own pretty well, despite these actually being plus three, plus two Marines. Pretty strong at this point. 
uh the lings don't have any attack damage so they're really doing very little against these marines um defiler gonna come forward he's looking for the big plague but i don't think he's gonna get it yeah this defiler's gonna die here in just a short moment and oh this one could get huge plague there it is the big plague oh my goodness i should actually change the uh the colors here now nope can't do it now they're both red that's unfortunate we can't actually change the colors here he's got restore <laughs> what <laughs> okay mine gonna put down restore oh man i knew i love this guy what a character Built, making restore in this situation oh my god his oh his vessels his vessels oh here we go getting some kills on those those are some beautiful kills there he kind of let most of them escape he almost had them all trapped though in the in the center right base almost managed to kill off a huge amount of those vessels but some of them do end up getting back home i think three went down this army is going to get cleaned up over here. And yeah, you can just see the production in full swing here for action. He's producing so m much stuff right now. It's really hard for uh, mine to make any moves at the moment. Plague on the tanks. There we go. Big plague on those tanks. That's going to bring them all to 1 HP or 2 HP. Um, we just need a defiler over here to make sure that a big push from these tanks can't get right in range of that base knight is down in bottom left moving some resources over to this side unfortunately this high ground being held by the pure marine army over here by mind and action hasn't been able to establish a base in that location uh, as the mech play starts to unfold it's usually the best to just start taking bases everywhere on high ground as a zerg player you just want to take all the bases you can. We'll try to hold everything at the same time. Um, we're going to go under this Dark Swarm. Throw down a Lurker here. And that will eventually be picked off. I guess that wasn't underneath. That's kind of crazy. Dropship over in bottom left. Model Link's going to pop out, but no Defiler yet. A few Hydras. There's the Defiler. Oh, he targets down the Defiler. Very nicely done. Mind so smart with his targeting. Managing to make these... Uh, Marines last for a really long time even though they uh, will end up getting picked off in the end they actually traded a lot better if there had been a dark swarm there they would have traded like crap they would have, have hardly done anything and now he's gonna pressure center left as soon as these defilers go down he's gonna be in a ton of trouble or as soon as these lurkers die excuse he's, he's gonna be in a ton of trouble a lot more units coming down here but plenty of tanks here to fight we don't have a defiler with this this is the one moment where you would really want that defiler but it's not present and oh there it is coming in at the end of the fight this could actually break action another pretty good plague there more tanks falling but he's gonna get up on this high ground this is a huge moment Action in so much trouble. He throws down a Dark Storm, but it's too late. The links are all dead. The Sunken will go down, and this hatchery will fall. Mind is making it happen. Oh my goodness. He's actually breaking him right now. The fact that he took that fight before the Defiler arrived was so critical here for action. He's falling apart now. There's enough vessels. There's like 10 vessels here to keep on irradiating everything there's another nice plague he's gonna lose a lot of these lings and he's already lost the base he's got another base in the bottom left somehow he's managed to get that out but this base over here has no lurkers at it we might just see marines go up there no marines are not headed up in that direction oh boy we could lose a bunch of vessels here no vessels mostly staying alive one defiler comes out and with the hydras here helping he should be able to hold this position hydras and defilers another defiler does end up getting irradiated these plagued vessels are super super low you can see how hard it is to actually utilize um restore in these situations you're doing so many different things at once picking out individual plagued defy our plagued um science vessels and restoring them is pretty tough 
Looks like this drop is not going to get too much damage done. The dropship will end up going down here in a moment, and the remainder of the forces, Terran forces, will get cleared. But at the same time, he's coming in. He's getting rid of these defilers over and over again. We have some burrowed units under the Dark Swarm, but the Lurker is about to die. The Lurker goes down. Dark Swarm on the ramp. Can he actually get some lings under this? He's got one ling there. I guess it's burrowed? It must be burrowed under the underground. Tanks are having a hard time getting through that, and the lings will actually flood down here to just barely hold in time. Looks like he is going to be able to save this base for now. Nice D-Matrix there. Another Defiler coming down for the Plague. This might be the big Plague. Oh, another Plague on the Vessels? I don't know about that. Might have gone for this big group of Marines here on the left-hand side. If he had maybe done that, he could have gotten, you know, huge damage. But, oh god, he's going to go up the ramp. Uh-oh, this is scary. A lot of stuff coming up this ramp right now. Over on the right-hand side of the map, looks like mine's winning there as well. No Defiler here. It, one does pop out at the last possible second. Dark Storm comes down, but I think he can run by here uh, as the Terran player. Oh, he's not going to run by. He's actually going to stand and fight. All these Marines probably going to end up going down. Okay, finally notices that that's just going on. And so he will back up, but he's mining here over at the Mineral only. He's got a CC over here as well. Lings and Lurkers going to make their way up this ramp. Can he hold on? No. Looks like as the Lurkers burrow, the Marines will take a bad trade. And that is going to be taken out. This command center ripe for the picking. If he was only going to make one... If he could only make one... Uh, oh, God. One Muta coming in actually dealing a huge amount of damage. I don't know how many... Um, how many kills that got, but it looked like a lot. I think a bunch of vessels just went down to that. That is rough. Some vessels over here just continuously irradiating, get rid of, getting rid of these uh, defilers. We're starting to run out of gas now. This gas is gone. This gas is gone. And this gas is gone. We are on one gas. Action struggling away here with just 70 gas in the bank. Minerals are... Almost depleted there. They are depleted here and here. But we've got this fresh base. And that might be all we need. As a Terran player here. Mind is clinging on in this game. Action doing the same. Holding on by his fingernails as he tries to get another base in the top right hand corner. But Mind may go up there to deny that. Just kind of ignore this. Or just send the bare minimum tanks over to this location. While sending Marine Firebat into the top right. If he denies that gas for a little bit longer, he's going to starve action out of this game. And bringing even more forces over here. The supplies are incredibly close for a ZV ZVT, but this is not uncommon when Hydralis Defiler uh, is the style that's being played by the Zerg player. Now, I don't know what action is doing. I think it might be a counterattack, though. As this base gets claimed. And this base gets taken out. Action is struggling for gas. He needs that gas right now. And it doesn't seem like he has anywhere that he can really reasonably take it. He needed like lurkers on this high ground. He's going to go for the counter. Diving here on top of a lot of this stuff. Ling's actually going to waste on some of these tanks. Big group of Ling's coming forward here with one defiler. Few Hydras and a Lurker in support. Can he get on top of everything here? He's going to get on top of the first factory at the front. But it looks like a lot of these things are going to end up going down. And Mind is just moments away from clutching this out, it seems. Going after that tank. Trying to pick that off. Vessels are going to come back to help out. A lot of Marines are going to come back as well. Oh... The uh, tanks over here on the right-hand side, saving this base, keeping it going. Another wave of units coming up from action, but this is mostly links, just a few hydras mixed in. You really can't afford to make a lot of defilers or lurkers anymore, and he will get on top of this. Okay, he's going to clear it, it looks like. All of these tanks end up going down. It's 3-1, and it should be 3-3. Okay, 3-2. 
uh, for these hydras. He starts another upgrade. I don't know if that's the right call in these situations. You're so low on money. Feels like it's more reasonable to... Oh, wow. He actually cleared this over here. And he's starting to get some kills on these SCVs. Uh, I mean, action is making this a real game right now. Oh, this lurker really wanted to get that under the Dark Swarm, but it ends up just dying for free. Links have been cleaned up over here. Links coming down here, but there's two bunkers to handle that area. I think he's going to try and jump on top of this base and just kill this off. This fire bat is going to be so clutch. There's so many Lings in this fight. Oh, he gets this around. Okay, he kills it. And he will stop this base for now. He's managed to stop this base, and he's managed to stop this base now. Dude, there's so many floating CCs over here. So many floating command centers around the map right now. There's 140 uh, supply command center floating through his third base at the moment, and I don't think he's noticed. He's actually more concerned with taking down this base because now we're getting to the point where action is mining out of minerals as well. And he gets in there, he kills one of the Defilers. That's actually such a big move from mine to go in like that and just get the Defiler. That's going to stop him from making any moves uh, for a little bit. Finally, another base comes down over here. This is still very healthily mining, but the gas is so impactful. Action, having some uh, lurkers here on this high ground. This is an eight kill lurker and a five kill lurker up here. Just doing so much work for the Zerg team. Oh, dude. Nine kill and five kill lurker are going to end up getting irradiated down. This command center is going to fall, but there's another one with 40 HP that's just kind of chilling over here. I think the other one burned as well. Mind is going to run out of command centers. He had three floating command centers. Now he's got... Oh, another one over here. <laughs> it's got so many floating command centers. Crazy. What are all these command centers doing? It's like that meme with too many limes, man. He's got way too many limes in his hand. He can't hold on to all of them. Um, another command center going to go up over here. Let's see if he can get this rolling. Because uh, now Action has actually got an economy again. He didn't have an economy for so long. But he finally kind of has one again. He's got two gases rolling. And all the science vessels have been... Uh, irradiated dude this one hydra could kill every science vessel in a matter of seconds dark swarm plague going up everywhere oh dude he's starting to run away with this action with the base over here oh the one the muta he produced another muta he's gonna go after these six vessels six vessels man we do so much damage there's another command center floating out it's the one from six o'clock he has to take a base right now. Oh, man. Mind is just running in right now. There's a Nidus here that probably is going to block him. Does there... Is there going to be one more? Oh, that Muta come in. It just killed three vessels, but... Mind is pushing in, dude. Can he actually break this? The Marines here with 3-3 three, three are holding so strong and it's just pure Ling popping out right now. What's coming from behind? Lings and Hydras. Where are the Defilers? He needs like one Defiler. <laughs> if he had one Defiler, he kills us. Okay. He will eventually kill this. The final stand of the Firebats here will end in defeat. Mind is losing this match for sure. It's going to end up going in the favor of action. He takes this one home for his squad. Oh my goodness. What an incredible match here. This final game between mine and action. Really intense battle back and forth between these two. And I think we finally reached the conclusion. Although we do have mining over here again. And <laughs> mine is making some use. I can't believe he's still alive. How is he managing to do this? Uh, we're getting some mining going over here. Drones are being transferred. Oh, a lot of those are going to go down. Only four managed to make it to this bottom left. I don't know why he didn't transfer them over here. I guess there's enough being transferred this direction. He's going to head over towards the natural. He knows there's not that much over here. And so maybe he can get into a position to snipe some stuff. But a defiler pops out. He actually needs to back away from this position. I thought Action had this. Look at how close we're mining from each other. This is wild right now. Okay, big plague should come down. Actually, doesn't have it, I guess. Not enough uh, energy for that. 
Man, he's gonna come up this high ground. Oh, dude, mine's actually gonna kill this base. Center left. There's only the bo bottom two bases. Oh my god, he taps out. GG. Action. Gives up. Oh, man. I can't believe he gives up in this situation. It was so close. Oh, it's such a nail biter, this game. He's, mi he, he's mining like inches in front of his base. You can see the creep from the command center. Uh, just about. It's so close. All he needs is a defiler to pop out here. Get a plague or something and just move over here to clean this up. Oh, dude. What an intense game. This is... This is probably the best match of this entire Pro League, man. This is a crazy one. Holy. Mind and action fighting over this base so much in this game. And then all over this base over and over and over again down here. The base has tr traded hands so many times. But this attack right here, I guess, is the thing that ended it. Action was finally starting to stabilize with maybe getting another base online, another gas potentially coming online for him but as soon as mine get up, gets up that ramp and kills that base action decides to tap out i still feel like it was a little bit premature like we're long distance mining over here mine just trying to sneak out as many minerals as he possibly can and i mean the so many command centers were made and destroyed in this game it's crazy we had like four command centers floating at one point and he ended up having to take this one over here to mine because he lost so many different command centers and he rebuilt one over here even though he had two command centers floating over in this area dude what an insane game i would imagine you would want to float this command center instead but what do i know i feel like mining this gas is probably pretty important usually you mine this out and then this base can just float wherever because it's not really necessary it doesn't need to be there anymore but mind i mean playing out of his mind in this game crazy crazy good one here but i think that's it for his squad like no wait mind wins so we continue on oh my goodness that's right i i had it in my head that action was gonna win for so long that i thought that th this was over but we're actually gonna go to another game it's now two to three the score here between efforts team i guess you could just call it uh minds team at this point mind clutching it out here and giving his squad a hope beyond a hope that they can actually bring this back action falling flat here who on his team can clutch this one can finish this one off if anyone or are we going to go to the ace match I need a little breather here, guys, before you jump into the next one. We'll see you there. Wow, what an incredible match. That last one between Mind and Action. Super impressive gameplay there from both players. I really enjoyed and I always enjoy watching Hydralis Defiler play. It's so much fun and honestly very difficult to play. There's a lot that can go wrong. All your units are really, really uh, easy to kill. Very much a glass cannon composition. But action played it out beautifully. Mine, however, hung in there like an absolute boss. He managed to clutch it out and brings his team to this final. If free can win, then action squad will take it away. But... I have a feeling we're going to the ace match, boys. It's effort versus free in this final match. And I definitely rate effort highly over free. This is Heartbreak Ridge, however. There could be some uh, you know, crazy plays coming out of free. We'll see. He's gone for a forge opener. Uh, there's no hatch at the natural. He's going to take his hatch at the third first and take the natural a little bit later. So he's going to get Lings out before taking that. That makes me feel a little bit better because sometimes I've seen cannons go up here. If you put a pylon right there, you can build cannons here and it's just, it's it's tough. It's tough to get in there. Um, if you try to run up this ramp, like if you don't see the cannons or even one cannon before it's done, there's like literally nothing you can do. You can keep the hatchery, of course. The hatchery will live, but you can just never, you can never 
mine off of this. Because they're so hard to get rid of that. And if they keep building cannons as time goes on, you'll just never get in there. And they can even spread the cannons over to here too. Oh my god, Heartbreak Ridge when you have cannons right there. It is nasty. And so you'll often see Zerg players just take their hatchery over here. I'm happy to see Effort do that. He's going to drop a second hatch over in this position. And we'll get into a normal three base play here on Heartbreak Ridge. Now, let's just talk about the map a little bit more. Um, it's pretty standard play in terms of PVZ. You've got your pretty wide open natural. There are some shenanigans that can go on with the back mineral patches here. Um, this one over here as well. And we could see some sort of crazy play out of effort. Uh, to try and hop uh, lings over this wall and you can kind of hit it from both sides it's pretty hard to create a decent wall at the front as the protoss player so oftentimes you, you're gonna see zerg players abuse that layers started over at the third base that's interesting wants to hide the layer here and i don't think freeze actually spotted that didn't get a glimpse of it but there is a zealot heading over to the third, so as soon as he sees that, he, he'll know that he's not in any danger of a hydralis bust. Um, like a 973 at least. There could still be a hydralis bust, of course, but it would be something quite a bit later. Zealot actually heading over towards the natural now. I guess the probe went down, or no, the probe got chased? What happened to the probe there? Okay, it's actually in the main. There's that probe does end up going down there right at the very end as it scouts the main. This zealot still hasn't gotten in to see that lair yet. I thought he'd send that directly over to the third base, but Effort is doing a good job kind of moving northward here and threatening the surround on these zealots, and he's actually going to go home with all the zealots. Oh, well, maybe tuck them in a corner here or something. There's a third zealot coming out. That's almost enough to take on all these lings if he controls really, really well. Not the greatest control there from free and effort pulling back his lings. Beautifully done here. Look at him losing like one ling. Two lings go down to those zealots. Three lings, four, and that's all free is gonna get effort. Excellent, excellent job. Looks like he pulled probes to make sure that the lings couldn't run by. He's gonna build a second cannon. He still doesn't know if there's a layer or not. <laughs> That's how in the dark Free is right now. He builds a second Stargate. Wait, what? You're just going to go for a second Stargate? What if this was a Hydralis bus? What if there's a Hydra den up here? Free is a madman. He just assumes that there's going to be Spire coming here from effort. And it's just, it's, it's hatcheries. It's Spire. We're making Scourge right now. Hopefully this first Corsair doesn't end up dying. Didn't spot the Overlord on the other side of the map. That's some good maneuvering by effort. And, you know, he's going to get in here and see Hydroden is coming. That hatchery on the way. Oh, is he going to lose this? Oh, I think he does lose it. Yep. That's going to go down, I think. Oh, man, Scourge. Sometimes they feel like they have so much range, and then other times it feels like they just have no brain at all, and they, they can't do anything anything correctly let's see if he can catch this he's really trying for it he would really like to catch that oh, hydra's on the way what are these guys mind readers both of them free just knew that he was that he was gonna have um spire here that effort has gonna have spire and now um effort just knew that he was going for double stargate because he just went straight into hydra or maybe that was his plan all along i'm not sure but this is absolutely the right thing that you want. You don't want a bunch of mutas popping out right now. There's already three Corsairs here. So regardless of if he knew before or not, now he definitely knows. He definitely knows what's coming. And so he will continue to produce a ton of Hydras. And you can see no Corsairs in production right now. The plus one's going to finish, but he's just going to halt completely on these Corsairs. He's like, he's got, what, five, uh, seven Corsairs. And they sh sure increment out fast, but he's already at seven. That's enough to one-shot these. He's got plus one in a moment as well. And so the Scourge will go down very quickly, but as Hydras start to pop out in higher and higher, higher numbers, I don't think this is going to be as much of a factor as we might think. There's a Spore Colony coming down. 
You'll love to see it. The spore is a great addition. He should add another spore, actually. And if you're going to put a spore in the natural, you might as well put one in, in the third base as well. There you go. Getting some uh, Scourge connections free is desperately trying to get some damage right now because he knows if he just lets effort get away with uh, macroing up really hard, he is going to be in a really bad position. He spent so much money into these Corsairs in that, that extra Stargate. And he's not going to have the number of Templar and just overall ground units that he usually would. And so his Templar archives is late. You can see it's almost nine minutes already and that's not even done. Hydras are coming across the map. He actually has to produce cannons right now. He's got four. Okay. So four cannons probably going to be enough. Let's see the targeting from effort. He doesn't get any of these Corsairs, unfortunately, and they get a bunch of Overlord kills. So that's going to be... Uh, supply blocking or at least slowing him down just a little bit going after the wall now but still in range here loses a hydra for free that's never nice uh, that gateway will eventually go down he might dive forward here to kill just one or two cannons and then back up so he can get the forge uh, that's sometimes a good maneuver uh, if you can get one of the upgrades cancelled plus one attack is already done this is quite a late timing we're at nine minutes right now and he's just pushing up with Hydra. So this is not a rush by any means. He's at 38 workers uh, in total. And, you know, he's just about at that number where you can really start to produce on six hatch Hydra. So he's on five hatches at the moment. But you can imagine there's going to be one more hatchery coming down in no time flat. And as soon as that comes down, uh, we're going to have about 45 workers and the real production can start here for effort effort being slowed down a little bit by those overlords but as you can see he is getting his feet back uh, underneath him right now and pushing out with the hydras on the map he's gonna have a lurker soon i think he's gonna go for one massive contain this is the f the really difficult part about playing double corsair double stargate uh, as Protoss is that you're just not gonna have the tech units the teched out units to deal with a lurker contain and on heartbreak ridge it's amazing for lurker contain you can set up a big lurking contain here it's so hard for the Protoss to get out of this tiny little choke you can set up lurkers in a wide arc he's gonna run forward try to snipe a couple of Templar he gets one but a really nice storm in reply from our Protoss player bakes around on one of these Lurker eggs, trying to bait the Zealots into a fight here. Of course, there's no uh, Observer just yet. So as soon as these uh, burrow, the uh, units are going to have to back away or try to storm their way through this. Lurker goes up here on the high ground. Going to help to just push away the probe, at least not allow the expansion to come down for free. But he's done a good job of getting out getting out of his base here and not allowing the full containment to go down in his natural that is really important uh, if effort was allowed to just get a big containment here i doubt he would be able to get out but now that his army can flow he has a really good chance of uh, preventing a containment from ever happening and you can see the Lurkers just can't quite get in range of this. Otherwise, the Dragoons are going to deal too much damage. And so, we're just waiting for the Observer. There's the Observer coming out. That's a great storm hitting a bunch of Hydras and the Lurker. And he pulls back the Zealots just at the right time here. A few extra Dragoons do go down. Trying to bait some more storms here. Effort doing a good job. Just task switching and... Taxing the multitasking of free right now, but a good storm comes out and now free should be able to push the issue here He should be able to push out Kill that lurker and then kill these eggs on the high ground and yet effort will have to back away Ooh, a nexus down here Now this is not what I was expecting, you know The probe was over here and there was a lurker blocking him from getting down So he takes this base That's gonna be hard to hold on to but you know effort may never scout that or he might scout that way too late to the point where we've got, you know, five, six cannons right there. And at that point, it's not even worth it for effort to try and break into that base. He's going to lose way more uh, than he ever gains. And he's also likely to get flanked as he's trying to break through that tiny, tiny little choke. 
Yeah, you built a couple of pylons right there, and there's just one little choke going through. Oh my goodness, is it difficult. As a Zerg player, Hydras are quite quick, but they're not, they're not that maneuverable. And here we go. Big attack over here towards Efforts third base. That's a great storm right there. But some of the Templar are getting sniped before they can really get their abilities off. Burrow here from Effort. He's holding the line right now. Free is starting to break through, though. Still a lot of dragoons here. Another nice storm, but good dodges by Effort. Effort backing up to his lurker line. And he's baiting in these dragoons. If they go any further... I think we're gonna see a huge surround and probably all the dragoons in of this army die free making the right choice here backing away uh that was a death trap for sure and effort doesn't want to allow free to run away imagine if you try to push in there he would have gotten completely slaughtered as it stands he's probably going to be able to run away from this maybe take a decent fight <laughs> when the zealots are here tanking but really good targeting from effort you can see he's not shooting the zealots at all he's focusing all his attention on targeting down these dragoons he's going to get the templar as well forces the storm on some of these units that was an amazing trade for effort textbook maneuvers there the way that he was controlling his hydras but he still doesn't know about the space and this is going to give Effort a false sense of security right now. He thinks that he's managed to keep free off of his two bases and reduce that Dragoon count, or off of three bases, and reduce that Dragoon count. But here's the Overlord spotting that base. Oh man, Effort's heart probably just sank when he saw that. He needs to get down there and kill that base. But I don't think that free will allow that to happen. He's got plenty of units over here. Not a whole lot of Dragoons. He doesn't have that critical mass that he once did. But he's got a couple of Templar. If he moves one Templar down here, it's probably not going to be breakable. Even with the Zealots. Like, four Zealots and four, four Cannons is almost unbreakable. Now you need such a big army to actually get through that uh, speedily. You could do it if you had a lot of time to, like, you know, lurch forward with Lurkers and try to push everything back slowly but surely. Um, if you just want to get in there and kill this base as quickly as possible before you get flanked, it's going to be nearly impossible. DT out on the map, doing a little bit of damage here, picking on some of these lurkers, forcing back some hydras as well. Ooh, this is a great move, getting right on top of this. About, about five hydras, get two kills on two different Templar. The Zealots here are fighting hydras on the top side, but this has been really well handled by... Uh, effort who's going to track these oh man he just lost one of the observers can he get the second oh is there any lurkers behind this he could definitely target down that observer but he doesn't he's gonna bring all the hydras together and try to surround this army making a couple of lurker eggs at the front just buying some time here does force the cancel on the fourth base so free staying even on bases right now is a very good thing but losing all of this army is quite painful effort might have an opportunity to do some counter-attacking. He may be able to get over here and contain. You can't really build gateways over here. You got a lot of cannons. That's quite a bit of money coming in. But if the containment goes down here, it still represents a massive problem for the Protoss player. So let's see if Free can handle this. Oh, drop coming in. I didn't even see drop in the production tab, but he's going to try and drop over here behind the mineral line and as soon as he drops these lurkers he's gonna completely deny these mineral patches yeah no storm here if he once sent one templar over to this location he would have had a much better time uh holding this but he's trying to bring only zealots over here to deal with it and so the lurker eggs bl are blocking and the lurkers are getting so much damage some dragoons are finally gonna come down doesn't have anything to pick these up and send them into the main but that would be an awesome move here from effort if he was able to do that right now he's gonna pick up some of his units and bail out of here when he pick up one hydra okay <laughs> it's kind of funny i guess effort managed to save that one hydra the veteran hydra here he's seen some things he did his duty and now he's gonna rest inside that overlord maybe for the rest of the game We've got Lurkers coming up here. Taking this high ground is effort. Free pushing into this location. Can he actually break this? He's got 
Quite a few dragoons here on the left hand side, but no zealots to fight with this. So as soon as the hydras come forward and there's no storms left to deal with that, all these dragoons are gonna start to fall. Templar are on the retreat, but they're gonna get picked off as well. Now effort moving down towards this bottom right hand corner. He's been stuck on three bays for a very long time and free has just been chilling on these bases himself. He's got energy for a storm in just five more seconds. How can you break through this? I feel like this is the move that might break the back of effort trying to get into this base. Well, at the same time, we're gonna have a big counter attack from free. Free gonna go across the map and maybe claim the fourth. Yeah, this is a, it's a hopeless move here for effort. You just can't break through that. You have to just kind of accept the inevitability that that is going to be mined out by Protoss. And you need to find a way to keep fighting in the middle of the map and get this fourth base online. He has now uh, miners over there at the fourth. And he's bringing a large group of Hydras over here to try and block this army. Is still some good storms in the middle of all of this. The uh, Hydras are taking quite a bit of damage. He's going to run forward here, try to snipe as many Templars as he can. At least force out all the storms from these. And the flank of Hydras is going to do very well. Okay, he clears everything. This is a big moment for effort. Does he have enough energy for a storm? I missed. I misclicked there. Wasn't able to check the energy. Looked like he might have had just almost enough. But you can see effort pulled all his drones to the left hand mineral patch. Make sure that they weren't going to get stormed. Oh boy, that is a lot of probes. Effort is mined out everywhere except this bottom. Uh, right. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. This one lurker. Is it going to get a whole bunch of kills here? Oh, man. He's just going to just gonna try for it. He just runs over top, and he gets all of his probes down here. He only lost a few. But now this is every probe. That's 47 probes, I imagine. Okay, there's three over here and three over here. That is 41 probes at one base. That freeze mining from if he loses this to a lurker drop oh god here it comes here it comes right as i say it there's gonna be a huge drop into this base it doesn't have any lurkers in it though i just gonna run in at the same time we've got another storm here great storm there on the high uh, uh, uh in the north great storms here in the south as well it feels like this oh that final storm cinches it it is gonna be held yeah that that clinched it out for free he is gonna save everything um, or at least he's gonna save the base. Now, we need more cannons immediately. Free sending out an army of High Templar. I don't think that's what he needs right now. He needs something more. But he just does not have the army coming out. Is Effort just gonna take this? I think so. Some lurkers making their way down here. This one, unfortunately, not gonna burrow in time? Wow. Alright, that gets killed. But more Hydras make their way down here. A few more storms go down. Some final desperation storms. And effort makes it happen. Oh my goodness. What a crazy close game here. And that means that it's not over. Effort taking home that game means we're going to go to the ace match. This is it. The final match of the night. We've got action in the top center. Can I change this? No, he's brown versus mind in the bottom right. I thought they might send out these two players for this final match. I think the different squads they get to choose. It's, it's been mostly random, I think, for the first two rounds or in, in completely random is what I understand. But this ace match, I think it's been chosen. It's been foretold here that action would have to face off against mind. That game on Polypoid was just too good. They have to do a rematch. They have to do a run back to find out who is actually going to win this week of K-League or this day of K-League. I keep saying week. Man, I'm just so KCM brain. Action here. I bet he is excited to get his revenge. Mind. Maybe a little less so. He barely clutched out that first win. Must have felt like he was about to lose several times during that fight. He's going to open with an eight racks in this game. Now let's see what he can do with it. He has a wall to fall back to. 
is action gonna go for a 12 hatchery he is neo sylphid is not a super long rush distance and this could hit very very hard is this is how we're gonna end the k league is this going to be the final match the true decider for what has been an awesome day I don't think it was a full 14 games, but uh, yeah, I think it was 13 games and this is the 14th, if I remember correctly. How is it possible that we're going to end on an eight racks? Really going to risk it all here, mind? He's going to be sending his first Marine across the map. Second Marine is following close behind. Nothing's been revealed yet here no drone scout from action he's being so greedy not even sending out one drone simply to block the potential start of a bear bunker and there it is the bunker gonna start here and the drone is lagging behind he did put a little damage on that scv already but the marines are already here and the bunker will finish oh man action you're really gonna end it like this man Oh, brother. Oh, brother. He's gonna pull all the drones. He's not, he's still mining gas. What is happening? He's gonna make sunken. Oh, he gets the sunken down. That's kind of big. He actually got the sunken down. He gets the second sunken in as well. Um, can the bunker hit the sunken? I think it should be able to. No, it can't. Wow, this is perfectly placed by action. I cannot believe that this can't hit. He gets the... Oh, that's so big. He gets the SCV. He starts building the second sunken colony. And the sunken colony going to pop. It still has 100 health. Oh, it can hit. It can hit. It just wasn't hitting. Oh, he goes after the SCVs. He gets two of the SCVs. The second sunken pops. And the Lings are going to run by. Chase down the Marines on the backside. I think this is a win for action. Actions managed to do it. The kills in the SCV were very, very good. Excellent control from him. And this one sunken colony just barely out of the range is going to make, make all the difference. He pushes everything back. And yes, indeed, action is going to hold. It cost him quite a bit. Two sunken colonies were made. Two sunks, that's two minus two drones. Plus all of the links that were made. He does, however, start his lair at a pretty reasonable time considering everything that's happened. He didn't lose any drones fighting against the Marines. And he has link speed done back at home mind as a wall. But it's not a perfect wall. He needs to keep an SCV in that wall. In fact, he's going to bring two SCVs out just in case a link all in's coming. But that's not at all what's happening here. An academy starts. Oh mind oh you disgusting terran player he's gonna build a second barracks here he's not even going to bother getting a cc that is crazy he's gonna hide the marines down here he's gonna hide marines back away from this wall and he is just gonna go completely all in if action scouts this if action figures out what's coming the game is over he's gonna build three sunkins and the game will be over and he will find out look at this oh boy busted action sees it he sees everything there's the sunken this game is over mine tried to get tricky he thought that he could fool the master here but action gonna show him what's what triple sunken colony it's the ultimate counter to exactly what mind is trying to do here nice production fire double fire bats a good idea with the counter attack that could be coming in and he might start a cc uh that would be pretty crazy if he actually starts a cc here forces the triple sunken fire is coming down yeah, you just cannot break that. Two medics is just not going to cut it. Two medics and no range, by the way, too. It's so hard to break sunken colonies without range. 
And so we have the wall. We've got the little bio ball out in front. But 20 drones to 24 SCVs. And the Lings are going to try to run by here. Oh, they're going to get in. And the command center is not even close to being done. All he needs to do is just kill this kill this SCV. Okay, can't really do that. He kills the SCV at the natural. Oh, it's so bad. It is so bad. Seven mutas on the way. I can't believe action has stabilized to this extent. He's looking so good right now. Like he's still able to produce seven mutas at the same time at just seven minutes. He's got going and coming across a map. He built five sunken colonies this game, and he still <laughs> managed to sneak out those mutas. It's craziness, and he is just going to have so much power coming from the air. We've only got a halfway built command center at the natural, guys, and the mutas are only 30 seconds late. It's wildness. Medic going to go down here at the front. Plus one is on the way. Some turrets are coming up, but Mind is in a world of hurt here. He's still going to try and play this one out. But Action can taste victory at this point. He's going to throw down a hatchery right in front of Mind's base. And I just don't think he's going to stop making mutas. Just keep making mutas. Uh, run this guy down with the mutalist play. Action, he's absolutely capable of killing a strong Terran player with his pure Mutalisk micro, uh, even if he's not at a big lead. But when he's got this large of a lead and can just control and control and control and keep building Mutas, he is not going to let go of that lead. He is just going to secure this victory with pure Mutalisk micro. He doesn't even have to send in reinforcements right now. He's killed everything. Oh my goodness. Dismantled absolutely dismantled and gg is called you thought you could pull one over on action mind you naughty naughty boy what are we gonna do with you eight raxing action in this final match i wanted to see another epic long tvz like the one we had on poly Boy, but it just wasn't in the cards mind decided to gamble his entire team's chance to win this k league on an eight racks and it did not work out action holds it beautifully the positioning on the sunken was almost perfect like this one was perfect this one was a little bit off it's very hard to judge the range of the bunker uh, perfectly to make sure that you're out of range but he ends up getting it in the end beautifully done he hangs on action takes it home for his squad he takes home the prize money and wins this day of K League. Guys, thank you so much for watching. It was a crazy day of K League. I'm going to be looking for more replays of this nature, more pro leagues, more K Leagues for the future. So make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this. We'll do whatever we can to get more up to date pro leagues going as well. But. We're just going to have to work with what we got. It is what it is, guys. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.